Hello everyone, today we're taking a look at the GEPRC Crown. This is the HD version with the Cadex Nebula Pro, as well as the Cadex Vista. You can see I've still got my USB-C adapter, the right angle adapter that is included with the kit that is connected to the flight controller, which is the Span F722. Down on the bottom here, we have a 45 amp ESC that is D-Shot 600 capable. Props are tri-bladed 3045 props. Motors are GEPRC 1408 3500 KV for the 4S version. Comes with these printed, I think it's TPU or some sort of mix of uh, printed feet. Right here we have the 3D print that would hold your antenna for your control link. It does come with a battery mat. You can see I'm using a different battery strap. I thought the one they included was too long for the batteries I was using, which I did fly it on this RDQ 850 milliamp 4S battery. While I'm flying it, I did also have this Runcam 3S camera as well as a little piece of foam but I'm not featuring this footage in the video. The ducts on this one are much thinner, but still pretty rigid. Comes with an extra battery strap, extra 3045 props, antenna tubes, an extra battery mat, a wrench and a hex tool. This hex tool is important to be able to adjust your camera because a straight line tool will not reach in here. You'll need this bent hex tool. Also comes with a quick start guide for the Cadex Vista, a card to reach all the GEPRC socials, and two sheets of stickers. Top carbon plate is two millimeters thick. Bottom plate, which is separate from the ring plate, is also two millimeters. And the ring plate is also two millimeters. Motor post to motor post, it's a little bit bigger than my calipers will measure. It weighs a touch over 304 grams. With the 850 milliamp 4S battery I was flying it on, it puts it at just over 403 grams. With the Runcam 3S HD camera and my little piece of foam, it weighs a touch over 473 grams. Okay, here we go with our flight. This is the slow, cruisy flight. Uh, this is running Betaflight 4.2.6, so a pretty recent version there. Uh, there is a tune on this. Um, you know, honestly, I have a question now that I have reviewed the GEPRC SINLOG 25. For those that are doing this sort of flying with this form factor, why would you buy this over... Something like the Synlog 25. The Synlog 25, in my opinion, is much more capable. It, it gets better stock footage from right from your, your camera, whether that's analog or HD. And it has a mount on it that is already made for, uh, for an action camera, albeit it does need to be a, a naked action camera because that is only two and a half inch props. It just seems like... Maybe we've run the gamut with this form factor and we need to start looking elsewhere for that slow, cruisy sort of cinematic flight. The only reason that I could come up with that someone might want something like this is kind of a safety feature. You know, it's got that foam around the outside. It's got big, tall ducks on it. And those things contribute to the flight characteristics, but they can also help someone feel safe, possibly. That's that's really the real reason or I can come up with why someone would be looking at this form factor still. You know, there's uh, a couple of products like the Synlog that are smaller, less expensive, more capable in flight. They can still run an action camera. Again, it's made for a light or naked action camera like the SMO 4K. I, I just, this is going to cost you more. It's going to cost you more outright. It's going to cost you more in batteries. And it's louder. So, you know, while I'm not trying to be mean or negative to anybody who wants this, I just can't see a valid reason why you would buy this over something like this in log 25. Uh, if you didn't see the Synlog 25 review, I'll put a card in the top right-hand corner. Now that you've seen a little bit of flight footage, I would say immediately go over there and look at the flight footage from the Synlog 25. The Synlog 25 uh, can fly slow and it can fly fast, but it doesn't have the ginormous ducts. It doesn't have the amount of foam that this one has. Uh, and it's not made to run a battery. I think the recommended largest battery on the Sidenlog 25 uh, is a 750 milliamp forest battery. Um, so I, the long and the short of this review is I, I just don't know where this product has a market. I need for you to tell me that. I, I know a few of you really don't like these, and that's okay. Not every sort of flight style is for everyone. But I had to find a really calm day, and out in the street here in front of the house, uh, it tends to have kind of a breeze that flows through there. The The wind at this time is around 7 miles an hour, so there's going to be little puffs that are greater than that in times where it's uh, not 7 miles an hour, but that was what the weather reported. But you still see some fairly unstable footage, and if you can hear it, you'll see the motors making some pretty drastic adjustments when we do have those little puffs of wind. Uh, it just doesn't like it regardless of, well, I shouldn't say regardless. 
normally with this sort of quad, this is how I find they fly. Uh, you need a super calm day or you're going to get some bobbles. And then on top of that, I suppose if you're doing cinematic flying, then you're probably using a GoPro. So you've pro probably bought uh, the Real Steady. So you're running your GoPro footage through Real Steady in order to kind of smooth out all the things that we're seeing here directly from the uh, Cadex Nebula Pro camera. So your 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 workflow is probably going to be longer. Uh, it's probably going to make more corrections as you run things through Real Steady. And again, it's going to cost you more if you wanted to do different sorts of flying. I'll, I'm going to show you another flight after this where I'm trying to push it. And I'm trying to run it around as capable as I am, uh, as fast as I can. Uh, by the way, the flight time on that, again, 850 milliamp 4S battery, uh, 4 minutes and 28 seconds. The flight we're going to see in the backyard uh, that is faster is 3 minutes and 18 seconds. So you get to see both of those. So this faster flight here in the backyard is a different day. You can see that tree is blowing around pretty good. I had to kind of pick my spots of when I was going to fly this thing. And I figured if I'm going to go flat faster, then, you know, a, a little more wind isn't the deal breaker, at least in my opinion, because I wanted to test the performance. And as I'm going around these trees and these turns, that throttle is either pegged at 100% all the way at the top of the gimbal or it's within five or 10% of the top of the gimbal. Depends on the particular turn you're looking at. Uh, so there isn't much throttle left for correction. So you're really having to uh, use your pitch in order to kind of nose up to keep from going into the ground. Uh, and you'll see as I fly deeper into this pack that that uh, gets to be a little bit more dr dramatic. Uh, of course, you can hear it at relatively close distance if you didn't get enough of the sound outside. If you're wondering where that sound comes from, it's not coming from uh, an onboard recording that is a camera that I have set up on the table that I'm flying at. And so it kind of gives you that pilot perspective of the um, sound level that comes out of the quad. And we kind of punch over the house, if you want to call it that. That was 100% throttle with a little bit of uh, pitch back to in order to give it some boost to help get up over the house. So it's definitely not capable. And when it comes to flying in this style, there just isn't enough power in it. It's not meant to fly this way. But one of the things that I like to do is to do what other people won't do in reviews. And my nature is to fly uh, more of a racing style and more aggressively. So I wanted to give it a go. It's an extra data point. I, this, if you again, if you if you're still here and you haven't gone and watched the Synlog 25 review, I highly recommend going and reviewing that. Much more fun quad, still prop guarded, still safe, um, lighter. Oh, so impact, it's even more safe. Here I'm just doing some flips just to try to see if it would even do it, and I kind of over rotated on one of those. But yeah, it'll do flips and rolls, but yeah, it doesn't necessarily do them well. That's, again, I'm flying it outside of how it's designed. That's one of the things I kind of like to do is to fly things, not how they were intended, but how could you fly it when if you were to have one. Um, so this flight is going to be 3 minutes and 18 seconds. Again, same battery, RDQ, 850 milliamp forest batteries. I recently acquired a few more of those. So I think I have eight now of those, and then I have a smattering of the same size of battery with other brands as well. I don't know how much I should go into in the, as far as the details back at the desk. We'll go back to uh, the desk and cover a few things, but I really want to know why it is that if you're looking at this quad, why are you looking at this quad? I'm not trying to be mean or judge you. I just think, I my personal opinion is the Synlog 25 is just better. And if you're not familiar, this is the Synlog 25 right here. And as you can see, it's a much smaller quad. It's a lighter quad. It has the mount right up here for a naked action camera like an SMO 4K, or you go, go with a naked GoPro. This did not come with a mount. I showed you everything it came with. So you will have to either print a mount or you'll have to buy a print to mount your action camera if that's what you choose to do on this. I already mentioned it right away, but I still have my USB-C adapter in there. It's very fiddly to try to get that in there. And <laughs> because before the review, I wanted to capture what the version of Betaflight was, uh, I just left this in here, and I think I'll leave it in there for now when I put it back in the box. Um, and I will be putting it back in the box. I just don't plan to fly it again. It's nothing against this particular quad. It's this form factor. 
that that was kind of my questioning of should we be flying this form factor anymore? And my my question is to those that are interested. I know those guys that aren't interested are going to say, no, it's terrible. We should never do this again. I want to know from people who are looking at this quad as maybe a purchase why you're looking at this particular quad. You could be looking at it for a completely different reason than I am, and I'm not saying that's not valid. I'm really beating that over the head, but I, I just... You know, again, my recommendation is to buy a different GEPRC product, which you can fly more in different ways and more aerobatically if you want to do tricks and different sorts of flights, and it has much more authority, and it flies smoother from the stock cameras. You'll get better footage out of this camera than you will this one, and it's cheaper. It's lower weight's going to mean if you do hit something, it's going to cause less damage. Uh, I found this to be pretty dang durable. These whoops, those guards. I so showed several crashes in my review. This can carry a bigger battery and therefore possibly fly longer. Maybe that's what it is. But I can't think of any other reasons. Okay, so a few of the details. So if you lose a nut, there aren't any extras in the package. These are low-profile lock nuts, and they are... Uh, lock nuts, you can see the little nylon bits in there. So if you lose one of those, you're going to need to get another one that's low profile. Otherwise, you'll probably find that you can't get the nylon on there, and therefore it's no longer a locking nut. Even if the nut is, has the nylon, it just won't go far enough down. because You need a low profile. I mentioned it the quick roll already, but also getting in a hex tool in here so you can make camera angle adjustments. You do need to make sure you have that bent one. You can find those at stores if you happen to misplace it, but don't throw it away right out of the box if you happen to buy one of these. I did find that these little prints did leave marks on the cement, so that could be an issue for you. You know, uh, when I was a kid, if you made a mess in the driveway, you were responsible to go pick it up. Uh, also, while we're here at the bottom, you can see clearly here that it has a bottom plate, and then it has this other plate or structure that the, the rings that go underneath that, and they lock into place via those nuts there. Um, up top, as far as getting to everything, you know, there's a bind or a boot button, excuse me, right down there. You should be able to get to that just fine with your finger if you were to need to flash or anything. The USB-C port and the button, while not really easily accessible, it's definitely not buried. You don't have to take anything apart to get to USB-C because you are going to have to connect this to the DJI Assistant if you get the DJI or the HD version. And the button is just to the left of that. I use uh, an old paintbrush from one of my kids that I just cut the end off to make flat so I can press those buttons in there. Now, the last thing I'll mention here is I think uh, a little bit of security on the battery lead. I know it doesn't go very fast, but by chance, if you were to be up high and you were to come out and hit real hard on the front end, uh, even with a battery mat, even with a strap with a little bit of silicone on it, there's potential that the battery will shift forward so you don't have an action camera on the front to stop that or your action camera on the front does not stop it. The, the battery lead would get pulled on until the battery became disconnected if it did become disconnected. And then you could end up with a little bit of damage uh, to your ESC pads if it did get pulled on very, very hard. Uh, so I, if I had this, what I would do is I would take a zip tie and I'd run it around here. I'd kind of push this down a little bit first to give it some slack. And then I would run it through this hole here and then out around the zip tie to, to capture this carbon piece right here and the two battery wires and then secure it down in there and probably put the knot from the zip tie uh, down below deck down there. That way, if you do have one of those crashes I just mentioned, it first pulls on the zip tie and hopefully that secures it enough to where it stops it or at least gives you a fighting chance that not the full force of any pressure or impact uh, pulls on the battery lead directly down to your ESC down there. Price point on this varies. It depends on which one you get. The analog version is somewhere around $229. Again, depending upon if you go with the TBS Crossfire, FR Sky. And the same can be said about the HD version, which is what we're looking at here. Uh, it comes in at $384.79. So pretty heavy price on the HD version. That's not unusual. Uh, oftentimes we do see these anywhere from $120 to $160 bucks more than their analog counterparts. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, or otherwise, please let me know in the section down below. I appreciate your time, and thanks for watching.